tiring experience to separate the great from the good and will help you adapt to the challenges of hiring remotely. This brings faster hiring, reduces bias, and gives your engineers more time to solve problems that matter. That's why we're already working with some of the best engineering teams in the world. Schedule a demo with us to learn how we can help you shape the future of work today. Codility. Remote tech hiring everywhere. Welcome, everyone, to the Tech Recruiter's Guide to Hiring Developers webinar. Today, I'm joined by three seasoned recruiters, Joe from Epic Games, Munira from Microsoft, and Ashan from Nexing, to discuss the topic of how to tackle the challenging task of recruiting technical talent in today's demanding market. Uh, in the next 45 minutes, the main topics we will discuss um, is how to attract talent and how to source um, or what sourcing strategies to follow, best practices and steps for a remote plant friendly hiring process, and last but not least, how to provide a world-class candidate experience. There will be no separate Q&A segment at the end, but you will have the chance to submit your questions during the event, and we will pick a few to discuss uh, with our guests. I'm Daniel Grancher. I'm a lead technical recruiter uh, responsible for engineering hiring here at Curiosity, and I will be your host today. And let's get started. First of all, I'd like to thank Joe, Munira, and Ashan for joining me. It is great to discuss these topics with experts of technical recruitment. And I'd like to ask everyone to introduce themselves and tell us a, us a bit about yourself and your background in technical recruitment. Uh, let's start uh, with you, Ashan. Okay, thank you, Daniel, for this nice introduction. Uh, thank you for setting up everything as well uh, with Codility. So, well, my name is Eshan. I'm working as a recruit, uh, technical recruitment and sourcing manager at Nextink. So I've been working for Nextink for the past five years almost. In July, it will be five years. So before that, I had no clue about technical recruitment. I really didn't know what it meant, right? So I just jumped straight into it uh, when I started at Nextink, spent Tons of time with the engineers trying to understand what they were doing, uh, get really curious about uh, the technical environment and then growing the company as well. Now I'm, I'm happy that I'm able to really have a team with me uh, to help uh, really recruit the best uh, technical people, talent out there on the market. So this is me. I'll, I'll pass it on to, to the next one. All right. Uh, Monia, can we um, continue with you? Of course. Uh, hey, everyone. Um, I am Munira Ali. Um, I work at Microsoft right now at Technical Social. Um, however, I started my journey back in India. So um, my hometown is India. Uh, I started doing technical recruitment from there. Um, worked then for a few years. Then I moved to Hong Kong. I was in Hong Kong for around four or five years doing the same thing. Um, and then I moved to London four years ago, and uh, I haven't left technical recruitment so far. Uh, worked internally, externally at the RPO, sat across, sat across different sides of the table and enjoyed every bit of it. And this, uh, this has given me um, a chance to um, learn more about uh, recruitment and everything. And uh, I started my YouTube channel a few months ago just to give it back to the community, what I have learned so far and uh, how I just, my mission is to tell everyone like, you know what, um, there is no fear while doing the interviews. And if with the right sources, you can uh, nail any interview that you want. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a passionate about diversity and uh, diversity sourcing as well. Um, so we're gonna talk about it today, but that's all from my side. Um, happy to be here. Thank you, Codility Daniel Lewis for calling me. Yeah, we are definitely going to discuss the topic of diversity. It's a very important um, aspect and, and uh, point to consider nowadays. Uh, and last but not least, Joe. Cool. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Burridge, and I'm a senior recruiter at Epic Games. So um, if you're not aware of uh, Epic Games, we are um, a video games company and a tech company. So we, we make games like uh, Fortnite. Uh, Four Guys and Rocket League, uh, also technology like um, Unreal Engine. Um, and so my role here, I've been here for about 18 months, and my role is hiring for uh, tech and engineering teams uh, across Europe. So I've done uh, hiring in, in North America as a flexible recruiting team ha has to be sometimes. Um, I have about 10 years uh, in recruiting. All of that has been 
within uh, the tech industry. The last five years of that has been within the games industry. That was very much, I'm in my dream job territory. <laughs> Before um, Epic, I was working at Electronic Arts, um, where, uh, again, I was working with game studios and tech teams. So working with uh, the teams that made games like uh, Need for Speed, Battlefield, uh, and FIFA, uh, to name a few. So, um, yeah, that's me uh, in a nutshell. Thank you very much. And um, lastly, I will introduce myself uh, a bit better. So once again, I'm Daniel Grancher, and um, I'm a lead technical recruiter here at Codility. I spent about eight to nine years in technical recruitment. Um, joined in a, uh, I started in an agency and uh, then joined Google. Um, been there for more than a year. Uh, spent some time at BlackRock. Then uh, I also been at Microsoft for for quite some time and uh, joined Codility um, about eight months ago um, to get Codility to the next level and uh, uh, basically uh, get our products uh, on the market and help our customers and uh, basically engineering teams uh, of the world to, to harness the engineering potential. Um, and uh, I'm very happy to uh, be here with, with you guys. So I, I think that the best approach would be to go uh, in a chronological order, starting with the first step that uh, you usually take uh, when, when starting a new recruitment process. And uh, what I would like to ask is what is the uh, first thing that you consider before even kicking off a recruitment process? Uh, what will you talk to? Uh, what are you considering at that stage? Um, Joe, you finished last, so why don't we start with you this time? Yeah, great. I was, I was, I was just about to put up my hand like <laughs> I was back, back in a classroom or something. Like, choose, choose me. Um, yeah. So uh, I think uh, the, the phrase that I use here quite often is uh, more haste, less speed, right? So I think um, when I first uh, started recruiting, if I was given a job, I'd, I just want to get out there and start searching straight away. Um, but I, I really say that the key thing is really taking your time to prepare um, and also taking hiring managers on that journey as well. Because hiring managers too, especially uh, new ones, will just want to get started straight away and start looking. So um, what I say by that, you know, my first question would be like, why why are we hiring? Um, like, what, what do we need another person uh, on the team or in the company to do? Like what, what's the problem this person should, will be solving ultimately? Um, because I do think it's the, the, the role of uh, the recruiting team to think about talent in, in all aspects. Um, sometimes I come back to that hiring managers and teams and it's like, sounds like you may not actually need to hire for this role. Uh, it sounds like, you know, we, we could solve this in, in other ways um, by um, using internal resources more smartly or something like that. So um, that's what I like, which is counterintuitive, I think, a counterintuitive for ever. Uh, recruiters to, to be saying that but that is that is uh, what we should be thinking about um, talent across the, the whole company um, and then I'll keep it uh, high level allow Manir and uh, Eshan to get in but yeah I think it's just the, the importance of alignment so so why are we hiring um, thinking about um, then what are we looking for is what we're looking for right uh, based on the market or uh, the diversity of the team and so many other factors so yeah I'll just end off by saying alignment um, and taking time to prepare is, is really key. Thank you very much. Uh, Ashan, what do, what do you consider when, when you are kicking off a process? Well, I think that was uh, uh, quite well explained by Joe. I think uh, what, what's, uh, I think something also that we really need to focus on is, uh, is the team themselves. Uh, sometimes, you know, so, some team have actually have the capacity of absorbing new resources some other don't, so we just really need to understand their situation. Uh, why is that important? Because the person that we'll bring will actually be part of a system. It won't be just one person coding and applying programming on, on his own or her own. It will be part of a system. So it's important to understand like the team structure, the project they'll be involved in. I think that that is key uh, before we even start uh, to look for someone because maybe someone can have great technical skills but actually cannot fit in a specific team and the other way around. So yeah, I, I think I'll just complete it with that. Thank you. Um, and Munir, I, I assume that you have quite a lot of candidates going through processes. Um, 
how do you handle them and also um, you know when, when obviously when you are getting a new position to fill um, what are the, the steps that you take um I think my my, my fellows uh, Joe and Eshades all said all the right things um, if I have to add something in this is that when when we get the role the important thing is what is the role and how the the candidates applicants or engineers who are we bringing in what they will do now and what they will do in next one two years five years down the line so how are we gonna uh, make the career for them what career are we providing for them how how they will be excited to work I mean, say I, I, I work at microsoft right so my first question to my hiring manager is why they should work here what exciting things are we providing to them to work with us in this role and how their role will look like next few years down the line and how we can make this our recruitment process more interactive and more candidate experience like you know how we can make the experience better for them so that they not only enjoy this they want to look forward to work with us very well said and um, the candidate experience is definitely a topic that uh, I would like to discuss a bit further today um, and it definitely starts with you know setting the right foundations to to have a great uh, candidate experience and that starts with with the hiring manager and figuring out what the right role is uh, or what the what the role should be and how we should should we present that to the candidates so they are interested in going through uh, usually a multiple step uh, interview process. Um, all right, so I guess now your your role is kicked off, um, and uh, you know I guess the next stage is finding the right candidates for the for the said role. Um, can you share some insight into your most successful methods of sourcing technical talent? Um, what are you using? Where are you looking? How are you getting engaged with those talents? Uh, Ashen, if you would like to start. Sure, sure. Happy to start. So, well, unfortunately, I don't have a magic recipe, right? <laughs> Otherwise, I would have sold this very in a very expensive uh, price. <laughs> so, um, yeah. but anyway, um, I think it, it starts with uh, with the for me, of course, it, it's only my opinion, but it starts with the recruiters themselves. The reason why, um, before we even speak about the methods and and the tools that we're using. I think the understanding of the technical environment is key. As I was saying a bit earlier, some, some, someone with great technical profiles can, can be a great candidate, but not a fit to a team. So if the recruiters actually understand what the projects they've been involved in, what, what they did, um, how, they, how they actually worked in the past and understand all the technical environment that comes with it, I think it's the first step. Um, it's not part of the method, but I think it, it, it's the recruiter. It's it's key for the recruiter to understand everything. Um, so it starts with the recruiters, I, I would say for sure. Um, then, in terms of pure methods, I think we need to see also recruitment as a collaboration. Uh, sometimes it's like it's like it, it feels like okay, the, the the recruiters are going to recruit. They need to find someone. Um, I think as 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 a key part in, in the method of, of sourcing, it will be a collaboration with the hiring manager and even ex extensive, extensively with the teams themselves. Um, I think all of us, we have a huge network with recruiters, I guess. Uh, so, you know, developers, they have a network with, uh, with developers as well. So it, it feels like it, it should be always part of the method to bring everyone together in order to be successful uh, in, in, in the sourcing part. <clears throat> then... I think that we all use LinkedIn. <laughs> it's the, the the most famous platform, um, and it it actually brings good results. So I would say that in in the method we should be really structured in, in the strategy uh, and how we approach sourcing. I don't think that we 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 should only use LinkedIn, but if it's the tool that that is working the most, we should maybe spend the most time in it. But it, it should be the only tool. I think we should be creative as well in our approach. I think we should find varied a tool, varied pl platform, um, target also local markets that you know we, we don't really uh, think think of initially when when we start sourcing. Um, and I think th those are key methods to to be able to be efficient in the sourcing. Sourcing also it's it's, it's kind of an 
number game if i can put it i don't really like to put it like this but the more people you'll approach the more chances you'll have to uh, to get some answers um however we also need to to adapt our messaging i think that today um being really pers personal having a personalized message is important because people i feel that you actually read the the, the, the cv and the, and the experience what happened to to us sometimes I, I, we have to be aware that the developers and engineers they're getting approached thousands of times uh, per, per month so how do we make a difference i think it's part also of the methods and it needs to be uh, think uh, you, you need to think about it before you even start reaching out to people see how you will approach those those candidates and so on um yeah this is how how i would put as as methods um of course it's key kind of takeaways but there is no magic recipe uh, unfortunately <laughs> Thank you very much. And we also got a question uh, from the audience. Uh, what would be your top tips for reaching out uh, to the passive candidates and receiving any response reactions from them? And I think that this ties very well into this topic. So uh, if uh, you would like to answer this as well, um, you know, please go ahead and for the, for the uh, uh, other uh, guests, uh, please also consider this question. Um, next. Joe. Yeah. Hey, um, I, I'm just going to just quickly run through like all of the, the I guess, biggest sources uh, of hiring. So um, first, first of all, like for referrals, um, Epic has a really high uh, referral rate. Um, mm -hmm. And this is very often the first place I go. So, um, you know, I've opened the position, I've advertised the role, um, and then immediately I'm looking at... Um, so I just opened up a back-end engineer position focused on using Scala, right? So I opened that and then immediately when I contacted all the back-end engineers who are based in Europe at Epic and was just like, just, just to let you know, we've advertised this role. Um, and I'm just like, if you could do one of these things, if you could either like my LinkedIn post, like my mm -hmm. tweet, um, or the best result would be if you could actually send me a referral. Um, and just so that, that they're aware, um, I find that, you know, most people in the company aren't aware of the jobs that are going live all the time, even in your own recruiting team. Like someone could say, hey, I've seen this position advertised. I'm like, cool. I had no, I had no idea. I'm not, I'm not checking our own jobs page every single day. So it's good to just keep your employees in the know. Um, and, and we do that. We also, you know, there's an all company-wide email that goes out monthly highlighting some of our new positions as well. So Ferris is key. It's a double-edged sword, though, when it comes to diversity. So you tend to find um, people tend to refer people like themselves. Um, just that's how new, human nature works, right? So um, it, it's great. Referrals tend to perform really well, stay, stay longer. Uh, it's a very quick uh, form of hiring um, as well and high quality. But at the same time, um, that's why it's really important to be directly sourcing for diversity uh, because then the more diverse people get in, the more diverse referrals they're likely to give and you know, and, and you can exponentially grow your, your company um, with diverse talent that way. Um, of course, of course, LinkedIn recruiter. Um, of course, you know, so many of our hires come from there. Uh, but we do also um, bolster with some sourcing tools like um, we were recently using Gem um, and now we're using Eightfold. And um, for example, what Eightfold does is it uh, searches through, allows us to search through our databases. We've had multiple ATS systems throughout the years. Uh, and we can search through back all through those. Um, and it has an AI, so it automatically can search through that as well. And uh, find candidates that are in our system and, and recommend them to us. So, so that's been a really cool uh, bit of uh, technology that we've been using uh, recently. Um, and then, uh, like Eshan was saying, like you've got to, you do have to get creative. If you if you're a recruiter in tech and you're hiring engineers, uh, the market's incredibly busy and um, and it's going to be mostly like if I, I was just looking at my numbers for the highest I've done at Epic so far, um, and I think 80, uh, only, only 14% of them have been hired through like people directly applying through our website. So and the rest tend to be a mixture of uh, referrals and sort directly sourcing. And then there was like a couple that from agency, but, um, yeah, so, so yeah, sourcing is key. Obviously we're using the tools I mentioned, LinkedIn recruiter and eightfold, but, using things like recruiting.net, which helps you like x-ray search, things like Stack Overflow and GitHub. I use Twitter a lot, actually, um, 
to tend to find people are a lot more open um, uh, responding to uh, a, a tweet than um, than perhaps like a you know uh, an email or a LinkedIn message or something. And then you've got to be out there with uh, at events and conferences and meetups um, as well. So there's so many so many different ways to source. I think no, there's no particular one that is uh, that is going to get you to win. Well, I mean LinkedIn Recruiter is like. A, the standard, right? <laughs> but then, but you need in your strategy, you need all of these other things to make sure you're you're finding the best people. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you very much, uh, Munira. Uh, what's your best strategy that works so far? Um, I think the best strategy is not to avoid or not to leave any stone unturned when you are going out there. I would not use the word hunting for software engineers, but let me just say finding or looking for the talent in the market, mm -hmm. right? So I think, obviously, as we all know that we cannot avoid LinkedIn being that the one of the biggest database of talent, like whether it's engineering, non-engineering, whatever is there. So I definitely don't avoid LinkedIn, but what I do is I try to avoid other channels as well, like database and referrals is my two best ways to look for um, the talent out there. Because you know what, if somebody is in my database, I know that they're interested with Microsoft. I know that they would like to work with us. What I need to do is find out the right opportunity for them. So when I get some roles, I do look out at my database. I tell my team and everyone like, hey, we are hiring this role. If you know anyone, let us know. So it's like we get the we get the talent who is being referred by them, and uh, they tell the candidate as well. Like you know, this is a team. They know everything. It's like my job is half done already. All right, and all I need to do is uh, prepare them, put them into the interview process, and wait to the path of success. But apart from that, um, we do a lot of passing sourcing as passive sourcing as well. So I I truly believe that employee brand is really, really help us here when it comes to diversity sourcing uh, spe specifically. I think talent is there everywhere. It is up to us. How do we attract them, engage them, and let them, they're like, you know, this is what we are offering. So um, in terms of that, we uh, we recently made the Reddit page for Microsoft. So I do a lot of hiring for European locations, especially Prague. So our team made uh, the Reddit Prague page. We do a lot of video, real, real life video interviews as well of our software engineers. I will share the link here where the engineers talk about um, how did they uh, how did they got this role, what challenges they had. And how did they how did they prepare for those challenges when they're actually interviewing with Microsoft? So and what they are doing right now and how they are successful. So these are the real life stories that we go out put there to engage the talent in the market. And that has been um, successful. We have since after that, the data that we are um, seeing right now has increased and that's um that shows that like the efforts that we are doing uh has been successful and of course as eshan and joe said that you cannot leave when you are doing engineering specifically in um uh specifically in the tech background you cannot leave github you cannot leave stack overflow you cannot leave twitter and you know you you can be creative in quora as well and you can be creative in other social media platform. I think there is a, we all recruiters have some specific channel that we love it. Um, uh, tweet, I like, I have worked on Twitter. It was like hit and miss for me, but I do love GitHub. Like I definitely go and source from GitHub and that's my favorite channel. We also use, um, uh, we also use uh, this new, um, new channel that we have is Seek Out. Um, and Seek Out is um, something that has helped us. Uh, you can use for diversity sourcing, you can use for location sourcing, you can also use for specific area that you're looking for. And I really liked it how database driven it is and how much reports I can get. 
so that this has definitely helped um uh, helped me in uh, uh for me in terms of my sourcing yeah github is definitely one of my favorite as well and you mentioned somewhat like hunting uh, and with, with this going with this uh, analogy if you want to catch a fish you need to go where the fish is um so hopefully no one takes it on themselves uh, but yeah github is definitely a place where a lot of developers are and um, you can have a very good uh, results um you know looking up their profile looking what they are interested in looking what they've been working on recently and that's something that can be very useful oh, um, da and oh daniel uh, mm -hmm. sorry to, sorry to jump in there's been some questions in the in the chat there um and there was one particularly good one that I, could i quickly respond to that or do we need to sure go ahead yeah okay cool sorry <laughs> sorry to interrupt um so uh mohammed had um asked uh, a question um how do you guys approach passive candidates and then how do you maintain a relationship with them um if they're not open for any opportunity at the moment but you want them to join your company one day in the future um so ju just uh just uh, some t um, ways in which i'm i'm dealing with that now and, and have dealt with that in the past. So one really easy way is to just, you know, you, you're chatting to someone over email or whatever it is, even on a call, and then just set a reminder, like, okay, I'll see you in three months. Add that reminder into my calendar in three months' time. <laughs> That's like the easiest way, like to manually do it. I think um, some ways that you can automate that, though, I've, I've worked at a company in the past where I, we had almost like a newsletter uh, function in our careers website so that they could sign up there and that they're notified about new um, positions that come up in the future. And also there's like a, it was like a company newsletter that goes out with big important updates that they might be interested in. Same thing, I'll direct them to be like, oh yeah, you should follow the Epic Games career page on, on LinkedIn or just like set up a quick LinkedIn alert so that you can be notified if you see something in the future and then you can always just get back in touch with me that way. Um, and then another way is that uh, using uh, I mentioned we're using uh, Gem and, and also Eightfold. Uh, these can like, you can set up like automated emails. So I could, um, you know, set up, set up an email sequence and then set up one for like six months from now. So if they respond to me within that time, then it will cancel it. But if not, I know this kind of like running in the background and that's kind of like for long-term pipeline building and things like that. Um, it's, yeah, like I said, it's just keeping in touch with people for the long term, because great candidates is like, okay, not, nothing right now, but that could be a higher, you know, a year down down the line. So, um, yeah, that that's, that's my answer. Just, just to jump in also, because indeed there the, the, there have been like many questions about uh, how to approach passive candidates. And, uh, well, Joe jo said it very well, that having something running in the background, I think it's great. Uh, but also, I think that um, sometimes we have, if a candidate is not answering, and the profile is good. There is there is a couple of ways. Like uh, you can approach also on uh, pe personal LinkedIn if you if you uh, if you just uh, approach the, this candidate with LinkedIn recruiter. You can also see the network. Uh, if anyone in the company is linked to this person, uh, make it bridge the gap and try to reach this person with uh, with with uh, with the network. Also, the manager can can give it a try uh, at this person personal LinkedIn because sometimes it's uh, more meaningful for for candidates to have the manager directly re reaching out to them. Um, I think that there is many ways. Um, I think we also represent kind of uh, of the company. So sometimes if you're too pushy, it doesn't reflect very well uh, in terms of uh, uh, company image. Um, so yeah, you need to find I think a right balance, um, and of course uh, keeping the candidates up to date. I like by the way the the newsletter uh, ID, which is uh, which is interesting. If someone is interested, have a list and send send the, the openings over. So yeah, thank you. And uh, we touched diversity briefly so far, but I think that it's such an important topic. We should definitely dedicate some time to it. Um, how do you ensure um, diversity? In your pipeline how do you make sure that you have all kinds of diversity um what what, what methods do you use and how do you make make that happen uh Munira? um yes i think diversity is very important these days uh, to have a diverse and inclusive culture if you want to have a diverse and inclusive culture that should reflect in your sourcing and recruitment uh, as well so i think what I what I do usually is let me tell you that we do set up 
the goals for that. If I have to specifically talk about women in tech, right? We all know that we struggle um, uh, diversity, especially the women number or the female number in um, in our tech team, right? So how do we do that? We we set goals for that. Uh, we do. Uh, I also do a lot of kickoff diversity initiatives. For example, um, I did an event in February this year, um, which was about the struggles that women in tech, tech have these days. What are the struggles and how, as a Microsoft, we overcome that. So I called up the volunteers who have been through that their journey so they can talk about their real life story. So, uh, so this was the event in February, which was successful, and that yielded me 500 leads who are interested to join Microsoft. And you know what? I'm still using that leads right now because that were so many. So definitely proactive sourcing is that you cannot avoid that. And I've also noticed there is uh, that sometimes, you know, the interviewer's training is important, right? The unconscious bias training, uh, it is important in the terms that when they are hiring someone, you know, you sometimes hear like, you know what, I want, uh, let's say, I want the replica of John Doe. You know what? The John Doe was there, but we don't have John Doe anymore, right? You cannot duplicate or replicate someone. You have to show them the data. You have to tell them that you have to be more inclusive. You have to think about the, how come you are bringing other people right now. So um, uh, unconscious uh, bias training for the interviewers and the diverse panels. When you are calling, uh, let's say, women in tech or let's say other cultures as well making sure that your panels is also diverse what's the point if you're calling um, a women and there are don't take this wrong but there are only guys talking about it and it's like kind of intimidating as well when they are interviewing to them so um mm -hmm. do that and always don't forget as a recruiter as a source we can make a huge difference so challenge the status quo let them know that uh, you know what this is we can make a difference through our sourcing method and present that data to them there is a talent insights uh use there are so many softwares out there take out the data present it to them and see that this is what we're doing but we have to do this now if we went we have to up to the market that's me thank you Asha. So it's a, it's a huge topic, fascinating topic, a very important. Um, I think, well, Monira seems to be really an expert in the, in the field. Um, for, for, for us, I think, well, has, uh, as, she, as she said, I think um, what we need uh, for, for diverse, diversity recruitment is an alignment of, of the whole company. I think it doesn't only come to, to recruiter to be, well, I, I want to, to have a diverse pipeline and recruit uh, people from, from everywhere. Um, but it's more like uh, as a whole uh, in the company with the managers. I think Munira mentioned it as well. Um, in terms of trainings, it's important to, to, to have um, uh, some trainings for, for everyone that are interviewing uh, candidates in the panel. Um, I think it, it, it comes also with a, with a strategy. Um, for me, I, I, as I see, diversity is kind of a long-term battle. It's not something that you will fix in a year or two. Uh, it's, it's really more than that. Because today, uh, the challenge that we have is that when you go to an engineering school, what you see is 90 to 95% of the students are male, right? So the, the, the challenge comes, comes with that. It's uh, in the future. How do we do to kind of change the mentalities? How do we... Do we change the yeah the, the, the way of, of how we see engineering, get interest from more di diverse people in universities, in schools? I think it comes from, from there. And then you have the all, all, all the other actions that you can actually take to, to make this happen uh, now. But I, I think it's kind of a long-term vision, long-term uh, long work. Um, but we need to, everyone, I think, well, everyone needs to, to go in, the, in that direction and and be aware of that. And thank you very much. And just uh, I, I want to throw into the topic of uh, of this uh, preparation for anything that we can do to ensure that our diverse candidates 
are performing to their best in the process. And uh, if, if uh, Eshan or, or Muna, you want to add something to that, please do so. Um, and also Joe for, for the base part of the question. I can, can I add something here? Sure. Um, so I think uh, preparation is really important uh, in terms of when it comes to that, especially like women in tech here, all right? They, like for them, like there are so many sta st statistics out there, like, you know, that women think differently than men, right? So it is really important that we cater to them according to what they need and what they are thinking, right? Uh, so what I generally do or follow is fulfilling those needs first. So be transparent or authentic. They want to know everything at one go, right? It's not that, hey, you know what? This is something, just a food for a thought, and you hold back the rest of the strategy. Don't do that. My, I would suggest is give them back whatever you have about the team, about the hiring manager, about how the roles look like, and you know what, the relocation, if they're relocating, relocation, what are the numbers, what are the schools, everything, so that you give them all the all the important secret secret spice for them to make a decision that, you know what, they're interested in all, and prepare them for the interview. Sometimes, you know, in our job description as well, when I go through, I like, oh no, they didn't read so many things. I don't think so. I have all those skills. So you know what? I'll rather not apply. And it is true. I have been through that, honestly speaking. So having the correct job description, which should be inclusive so that you are encouraging them to apply. So that is important. If you or maybe let's say your client does not have the job description like that, I would definitely go and tell and talk to them, present data to them and tell them like, you know what? This is really important, and this is how, as a source and recruiter, we can make a difference. Thank you. Uh, we have less. Oh, sorry, John, go on. Uh, really quick one. Um, just on that, uh, I've used tools in the past that like, you can run your job advert through, and it can tell you if you're using more masculine or feminine coded language. I'm going to include a link in the chat to a free one that is actually still really good, um, and it's great to just sense check, like, aim for using feminine coded language and the science behind that is that men will still apply to adverts written with feminine language but uh, you'll find less women will apply to to heavily masculine co um, coded uh, adverts so you're aiming for the feminine coded ones and i'm just putting a, a link in the chat there cool thank you very much um next question what uh, does a typical uh, interview process look like in your company and let's start with you, Joe, since you finished once again last. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so typically, uh, we, well, we try to keep the processes as lean as possible. Uh, I think that's the that's the most important thing. Uh, as lean as possible, but still keeping the assessment high. So it's typically uh, a recruiter screen screening call, and then you would chat to hiring manager, maybe a hiring manager, one other person on the team. Then you do a test if you're a software engineer, coding test, and then it's a final interview. Final interview typically consists of maybe uh, four 45 minute, one hour calls, usually two people in each of those. Um, for our engineers, uh, we, we very rarely do any like live coding exercises or anything like that. The, the only time we ask you to do any sort of coding would be during the test. So our, so our um, interviews tend to be, um, uh, yeah, conversations, um, very technical conversations, I'm not sure you can imagine, but, uh, but yeah. Um, so four stages, crew screen, chat to the team, test final interview. Monira? How is, so, it, how is it at Microsoft? Well, we use Codility mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, as a technical test. So technical test comes, um, so it's first is a recruiter's uh, sources screen where uh, we would like to know, um, or at least I would like to know uh, what they are doing, what is their motivation, and you know what? what roles they are actually after. So that, you know what, instead of telling them what I am giving it to them, I would like to know what they want. So I try to match what I have to offer to them. So in this way that I do that. And second is codility. So we uh, 
most of the software engineers go through a quality test. And then after that, uh, there is a technical and non-technical interview, which are four rounds um, of uh, three technical competency and five non-technical competency. So yeah, uh, three step process, quick and easy. Thank you. Ashan? Well, I think it's uh, kind of the same, right? Uh, I, I would say it's uh, four stages as well. But even though we, for some of our teams, we also use Codility. It, de it depends. Uh, some of the teams are using kind of an internal uh, technical assessment. And there, there is a, a couple of things. Either uh, we, we do the, the technical recruiter interview, and then we send the, the directly the technical assessment, depending on the situation, or there is the hiring manager with the tech lead uh, interview in between, and then the, the tech assessment and the final one. So yeah, mainly more or less the, the same. And um, so since the last two years, I guess remote hiring was very prominent uh, or became very prominent, how do you ensure that uh, your process is, is remote friendly? So, well, uh, I, can, I can take it. Um, well, we didn't really have the choice, right? <laughs> in the past, uh, in the past couple of years. So I think that it, it's a good question because before we actually didn't put a lot of effort in making sure that it was actually remote friendly. We just what, did what we had to do, invite candidates on site, and so on. Now I, I think we are just really mindful of of, uh, of the remote uh, remote work situation with uh, with everything that happened in the, in the last couple of years. So. I'd say to ensure that it is remote friendly, we, we just do what, what, we, what we can with the tools that we have, making sure that we can adapt to everyone's schedule. Um, it's, it's way quicker as well. Um, I think the tools that we're using, well, in Codility, there is this uh, kind of live coding uh, uh, session that we can use as well to, to make them uh, uh, code. And, and it's kind of a part of the, can be part of the technical test. For the rest uh, of the interviews, it's quite easy with, uh, with uh, Zoom or any, any, any tool that you, you can use. And I think it is the way that we, we, we do. Uh, for sure, we had to adapt, and I think we, we did it pretty, pretty well. Uh, all, all the companies had to, to adapt, and now uh, it's... Uh, almost automatically remote friendly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joe Munira, do you have anything to add to this part or, or did I just summarize it, it well from your point of view as well? I think Ashton did a good job. I think, <laughs> um, I mean, hey, there's, a, there's only so many ways that you can do a video call, right? So um, yeah, I think uh, as we've said multiple times here, just making sure the candidates are prepped and that, um, and if the technology fails, making sure that they know who to contact um and uh they have multiple contacts and, and ways of just continuing on or just letting them know being like hey if the technology fails that day don't worry about it we'll do it again another time so um I, I think uh going back to interview training though there are plenty of things that you miss uh during like video calls you know just uh, the non-verbal communication um it can hinder some candidates it can benefit some candidates um so i think it only comes with practice uh, and also um, uh, unconscious bias training. Uh, so, so if interviewers are aware, like that, the what the video interview scenario, uh, the benefits and disadvantages, then you can it can help with your assessment. Yeah, very well said. Thank you very much. Uh, we are very close to the end of today's session. So, if um, each of you could share one key takeaway that. Um, that you would like uh, our, our audience to leave it, um, please do so. Share that with us. Uh, Munira? Uh, yes, of course. I think my key takeaway would be is, uh, like there are no mis there are no right and wrong in technical recruitment. But if you take, if you do, if you do make a mistake, don't let it hamper you like, you know, oh, I made a mistake or uh, I should not do recruitment. You know, there is so much competition and everything. Don't let it uh, take it down. All right. It's all about learning. Um, recruitment is one of the industry, especially tech recruitment is one of the industry where you can grow and you can specialize your area. And, you know, I'm doing it from last 14 years. And you know what? I'm still not bored of it. I did try um, some some other fees, like you know, between HR 
and a bit of a finance as well. But I came back into technical recruitment because the only thing is it is fast, it is changing, and there is always a learning in this because it is changing so rapidly. So my key, ta key takeaway is don't uh, always uh, be curious and you know always look out for the new new things. And if something is not done, don't think that you cannot do it. Uh, think about what are the other ways you can do it so that you know you can challenge the status quo. Joe. Um, yeah, so I think my, it, it, it feels like most of the audience here is going to be in, in recruiting. So um, I think the key lesson that I have from my career is about the taking the time to to prepare and and uh, not, not rushing. I, I've said this at the beginning as well, but I, I still I still am <laughs> I'm guilty of this uh, time to time now, like even 10 years into recruiting, just getting really excited about a brand new position and uh, wanting to get it started. Um, hiring managers, are, I think, especially very good ones, are always wanting to, to collaborate with you as the recruiting specialist, as the per person who can give them really good data on the market, on the company, um, and and ultimately the person who's going to help them fulfill their goals of growing their team. Um, so taking that time to say, uh, say to yourself, I'm the specialist, I'm going to do this properly, we're going to do this right. And especially if we are advocating for things like diversity hiring or hiring in niche skill areas really setting really taking the time to set expectations of how long it's going to take and and bring the hiring manager along that journey with you uh and partnering together so yeah take your time partner with the hiring manager it tends to be my key takeaway Ashan, uh, in, i don't know if you could summarize it in one minute <laughs> One minute. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all. So, well, uh, no, I'd say I'd say uh, uh, Munira and Jules uh, said it uh, very well. Um, I would say that looking at the questions as well, that we are all facing the same challenges uh, in technical recruitment. Sometimes we can feel that a bit alone with the, the, the requisitions that we have, uh, a bit stuck and not finding people. But um, I think teamwork is actually much more important than we think <laughs> in recruitment. Mm -hmm. Having a team that can help each other, um, even switching the positions from one recruiter to another, um, having the help from the managers, from the team we, we are recruiting for is, is really key, especially in technical recruitment because we have so many challenges that we know the market is, is really difficult, especially at, uh, at this time. So, uh, yeah, I would say that um, we are all facing the same challenges. It's good that we can exchange, we can talk about it as well. Um, find new ideas. I think there is all, only we can all, only find solutions, and there are all, uh, always some options too that we can uh, we can follow. So, uh, I'll go with that. Thank you very much, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, each one of you once again, um, Ashan, Joe, and Munira for joining me today, and also to our audience for uh, you know being here and asking great questions. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, hope you got some valuable information. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for having us.